And Mr. Dinesh D'Souza joins us now. It's good to see you, Dinesh. Um, I, I appreciate you being here because I'm excited about your film. Well, it's a film that I never wanted to make. I mean, why? Because I didn't want America to become a country where you kind of needed to make a film like this. But when I think back, Emerald, over my life here in America and the liberties that we all took for granted, I mean, the liberties spelled out in the Bill of Rights, all of them, our right to free speech, to conscience, freedom of assembly, right to petition the government, equal justice under the law, all of these things have suddenly now become uh, fragile, have become precarious. And so this film asks a startling question, is America becoming the kind of nightmare police state that we have deplored uh, in other countries, North Korea, China, the old Soviet Union? I think at one point we thought that China would become more like us, but it seems that we are becoming more like them. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Dan Bongino's comments in that trailer really resonated with me because I realized at some point that I had become wary some of a knock at the door and, and wondering if at some point as a journalist who doesn't act in line with the corporate media, if I'm at risk, uh, at what point, Dinesh, because you've been very hopeful in your past films, I, I've seen all of them, right? I remember seeing one of them premiere at a Freedom Fest years ago in Las Vegas, and I, you've done such amazing work. And despite the country's problems, you, you've always been very hopeful. So what a specific instance was it that you knew you had to do this film and ask this question? Yeah, this film, I would say, is not hopeful in that sense. Uh, typically, my earlier films, I'd always be excited when the audience stood up and cheered at the end. They won't do that after this film, just like they didn't do it after 2000 Mules, because the film is a sort of a, uh, I, I, I make it, I compare it to an animal giving a, a kind of a warning to the herd that there is like a cheetah in the trees. Uh, a cheetah that not everybody sees. In fact, a lot of Americans will be like, well, you know, I'm not Trump and I didn't go in the Capitol on January 6th, so I'm going to be okay. I'm a law-abiding guy. I pay my taxes. These guys don't realize how vulnerable they are. Uh, just like the January 6th defendants, many of them cooperated with the FBI. Here's my passport. Here's my, here are all my social media posts. Why? Because we trust the FBI. So we are in a dangerous environment, and I'm trying to sound a, a real warning because at some point you cannot fight back against a police state. You can only run. But we are in a position to block the police state. There are things we can do. That's what this movie is about. And so in the film, that was going to be my, be my next question to you because you talk to people like Kyle Serafin, who's a regular on this show, and we're often breaking down the problems within federal law enforcement. And of course, he always has ideas of how you take that on. So you present solutions in this film because you think there's still a chance that we can deconstruct what is becoming a police state. Yeah, the focus of the film is really twofold. Number one, to bring out from insiders who have worked, by the way, it's not just the FBI. The FBI is the tip of the iceberg. Department of Homeland Security is like 10 times bigger than the FBI. Then we have all the other agencies of the government. And also, I, we make the point in the film that this isn't just a matter of the so-called deep state, because that implies everybody's hiding in the background. A lot of the police state is out in the open. I mean, all you have to do is go look at the Google uh, YouTube guidelines. They tell you if you don't agree with us on, on the trans issue and abortion and climate change, we're going to ban you. So that's not secret. That's out in the open. The police state in America has a unique quality. So a lot of the film is just exposing it and putting putting in the forefront ordinary people who describe their experience with the police state. And I think this is really going to send a chill up the spine of America. And then toward the end of the film, we talk about the opportunity to, to, to reverse this and to block it, to roll it back. 